Allison Blood. Oh, I really, really enjoy talking to Allison. She is a nutritional therapist. I'm not sure if you're familiar with this term. It's the first question I ask her. We certainly know therapy uh, and we know nutrition. So the marriaging of the two uh, should be obvious. Uh, she works a lot with women going through menopause and what needs to happen there. Uh, it's fascinating to me. I have loved ones going through that. Uh, you know, there's, there's, perimenopause, there's menopause, and of course there's postmenopause. I'm not sure if you know the difference. Uh, I, I had some questions about it, uh, but you know, you have to go 12 months. Uh, the woman has to go 12 months without a period in order to become postmenopause. But we talk about how food is medicine and, and your gut and Mediterranean diet and things that just not only women should do, but we should all uh, look at doing. But it's a great conversation. She gives great insight on nutrition and how to deal with you know perimenopause and how to deal not only yourself, but your loved one. I asked specifically, what can men do to help their loved ones, their spouse, et cetera, that are going through this? Because it, there's 40, there's over 40 symptoms and it all can be different for each, uh, each woman. Great conversation with Allison. I really enjoyed it. I know you will as well. Thanks for listening. Hi, I'm Joey Pins. People ask me, how did I lose 130 pounds? The quick answer is always discipline. I started my business, wasn't paying attention to my health, was eating too much, you know, drinking too much sweets. My daughter was born. Next thing I know, I'm pre-diabetic, I have hypertension. I knew something had to change. Discipline. I, like many of you, have faced many challenges in your career, in your family, in your life, in your faith. How did you attack them? How did you approach them? How did you solve them, hopefully? It all had to have some degree of discipline. I'm also asked, how did you found and start a tech business that lasted over 25 years? Discipline. I was committed to it, enjoyed technology, didn't enjoy some aspects of it, but knew it was necessary. Discipline. Our podcast mission, how do we use discipline to better ourselves and society? Join me, please, as I talk to interesting people and discuss how they use discipline in their family and their passion and their careers and how it helped them. Our podcast vision, growth through learning from others. Joey Pins Discipline Conversations. It will be light and serious. Join us, please. Thank you for consideration. Very cool. Hello, Allison Blood. So nice to meet you. Glad we can get the technical difficulties aside. And here we are talking. What is a nutritional therapist? Yeah, that, that's actually a really good question, uh, Joe, because not many people really understand what a nutritional therapist does, even though it sounds mm. quite quite obvious. What a nutritional therapist, it's... Um, nutritional science i studied nutritional science so it's the application of nutritional science to promote health and wellness uh, using um you know nutritional programs lifestyle modifications mindset so really it, it nutrition is a very big piece of being a nutritional therapist but it's also looking at the other areas of people's lives you know like stress management for example so because it all comes together really to to achieve maximum health so it's the application of nutritional science to make people feel great because when i think of therapy i think more mind and you know and kind of uh mental you know wellness whereas when it married with nutrition it seems like a perfect uh, an obvious outcome yeah Absolutely. And there's so I mean, the, there's so much research in the world of nutrition and, you know, what we eat affects us in every way, including the mind and the, the way we are and how we feel and how we experience life. It has a, a huge effect on, on us in every way. Certainly so. And interesting background where you grew up in England on a farm, your mother was a, a chef, you had you had some skin issues, some acne issues as a teenager, troubling times, and this kind of launched you into the hormone world. 
Yes, it, it did, because it, it's difficult enough being a teenager, isn't it, without having, mm. uh, you know, to go through having acne. And it really knocked, knocked my confidence. And I, I was determined to find out why this was happening. So even at that young age, I became very interested in, in what was going on with my hormones and how I could use nutrition and lifestyle rather than having to take medications to really improve my skin, which, which I did. Uh, and that really led me down the path of hormones and, and my real interest in, uh, you know, helping people that had issues with hormones. So I started off my career as actually as an esthetician, working specifically with women uh, that had hormone issues. And that led me into menopause, perimenopause, because that is an area where people can really suffer from, you know, skin changes amongst many other things. Yeah, certainly. So, and was it, was your acne a result of poor diet or hormonal or both? I think it was, it's, it, I mean, it's predominantly was hormonal because I was very mm. lucky that my mother was, was a chef. So we, we always right. ate homemade, you know, proper home cooked food. Uh, and of course, I mean, a teenager, nobody's perfect. You know, you do eat sugary things and, and drink fizzy drinks and, and stuff but I don't think diet was a huge player for me it was more that my hormones were you know going through that puberty stage where where things get a bit unbalanced mm. perhaps though well I've I've heard you call you know menopause the second puberty and that's the first puberty obviously uh, is is food medicine yes absolutely Food is medicine. You know, we can see how, you know, I see with the clients that I work with how, you know, it's not just the nutrition, but if you put all the pieces together, how you can really change someone's life. I mean, I work with something called the functional medicine model, which is a way uh, of working with clients when, when you look at the whole person. So, you know, if they come to you with whatever symptom they've got you don't just focus on that you look at the whole body and it's like peeling Mm. back the layers of an onion you know you're looking at the root causes of this problem so by changing someone's nutrition and and finding out what is going on whether it's their gut or or whatever is going on with their um nutritional status you you really can change people's lives yeah, you talk about doing a timeline process where you actually go back to birth and finding cesarean has separate issues and uh, describe that process. Yeah, it's it's fascinating because with the functional medicine model, we, we do something called, as you say, uh, Joe, a timeline. And this is where you, you, you have a very in-depth consultation with a client and you will go back to their childhood, to their birth, because... What happens to us throughout our life has an effect on how we are. You know, if you've had trauma, for example, that can trigger off certain things in your life. It can trigger off certain diseases, etc. cetera. Uh, childbirth, whether you're a cesarean or um, a natural birth, research has shown that the microbiome, which is, is our gut uh, bacteria, you know, if you're, if you're a natural birth, you naturally get bacteria from from your mother's uh, birth canal but if you're a cesarean you you don't get that so Mm. you know you your start in life is can I mean this obviously isn't for everybody's uh, when they're born but you know can be that you don't have as many good bacteria so you don't have a certain amount of these species of bacteria that that you need initially so it really is fascinating when when you look at someone's timeline, you can see the connections there. You know, if they've had traumatic events, or maybe they've, you know, been on medication or or whatever, or operations or, or things that have happened in their life. It's not all the time, but it's very often you can link them to when things started. You know, when they, for example, started with migraines, that might have been linked to a car accident or or a trauma in their life. Mm. So it's getting the whole history from a person is it really is fascinating. It's something that we really, especially in the states, do not do well. You know, I, I, I have to ask my doctor. You know, don't you want to know what I eat? You know, because they won't ask. You know, and and you know, if you're unhealthy, that's that's you know, 
going to be perhaps the root cause. You talk a lot about the Mediterranean diet. My father's from Italy. I spent a lot of time uh, in Southern Italy. And you know, people here in America think the Italians just eat pasta every day. But it, on Sunday, they have pasta. It's a little bit. But during the week, it's greens, it's fish, it's you know, um, usually white meat, and it's a lot of grains. It's very different. And you're a big advocate of the Mediterranean diet. Yeah, it's. I mean, everything I say with studying nutrition it is evidence based. There's so much misinformation out there on nutrition, uh, but the Mediterranean diet. That when you look at studies, that almost always comes up is a very good style of eating because you're getting you know all the wonderful nutrients that you need it's a very balanced diet it's there's no processed foods there's no foods high in sugar and and damaged oils etc and it's it's a diet that's actually quite easy to follow it's fish uh white meat nuts and seeds you know fruit and vegetables uh, mm. legumes and all your wonderful healthy fats like you know olive oil and olives and um nuts and seeds and coconut oil etc so it's actually very easy we human beings we're fascinating aren't we really because we really know what we should eat i think most people understand that highly refined damaged processed foods aren't really very good for you but we still eat them because they're made to be addictive they certainly are it always it always goes back to money, doesn't it, Allison? But uh, you know, olive oil is just in everything, and it's and it. You know, when we come to the states, we hear, "Oh, this restaurant is farm to table." Like that's some, you know, concept. That's I mean, in that's how they eat there. That's how they eat in in Italy and Southern Italy. I remember being there with my friends, and my uncle opened up the cupboard, not the not the refrigerator, the cupboard where he got eggs. And my my friends were like, oh, those eggs are bad. They're in the cupboard. I said, no, they came from the chickens outside. You don't need to refrigerate them because they're only <laughs> weeks old or days old. And just the whole philosophy just changed. And the, the, the viewpoint changes when you really look at eating whole foods, which you're, you, I hear you say over and over again. It's just very simple. Yeah, it is very simple, but it's not easy to do in the – food environment that we're living in at the moment because no, no i mean no matter where you go there's food isn't there any sort yeah. of shop you go in even if it's not related to food a diy shop or any shop there's just food and it's the processed sugary addictive foods and you know we're only human aren't we there's only certain amount of resistance that you've got because mm. you know your primal instinct is to eat high calorie dense foods and i mean these processed foods they have basically people that are just sitting there trying to get the the taste just right so you become addicted to it. you know that that sweet spot of sugar fat mm. it's it's difficult the whole food environment is i mean that you could do a whole whole podcast on that but it, it's quite toxic really because you know if we look at the obesity epidemic in the world and the, it's just going up and up it, 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 the yeah. health of, of, of human beings at the moment is, is terrible. Absolutely. What well, somebody once told me, I wonder if you agree with this, but um, they, their, their philosophy, their thesis was it, it's expensive to be skinny in that they meant that there's so many, you know, you're on the go and it's so inexpensive. And like you say, it's everywhere, fast food. You can, uh, you know, I'm, I'm working two jobs. The kids have to eat. I'm just going to get them something fast and move over. I don't have, you know, and it's very inexpensive to go. Whereas to be skinny, you're, you're planning meals out. You're, you're staying on the outer rim of the supermarket, you know, where everything's fresh and you're getting, you know, you have to go there often because the food goes bad and you have to cook it and you have to prepare it and it just takes more time and effort. I wonder what you think about that uh, philosophy. I tell you, one point I'd like to make is that it, it doesn't cost more to eat healthily. And that's mm. been actually proven. You know, you, it, you don't have to, 
buy convenience foods just because you haven't got time. I mean, you can make, a, for example, you could make some food at home. You could do like a, a chicken stew. I'm just mm. using this as an example. You could make big portions of it and you could freeze it. So, you know, what I do, I don't have time to cook every evening, but I do all my cooking on a Sunday. So I've got everything mm. for the week ahead. I don't cook in the weekdays, in the week evenings. I, I use what I've cooked at the weekend. And you can freeze everything. Basic fruit and vegetables are not expensive. You know, of course, if you're going to be buying your, your very like luxury sort of fruits, then the prices go up. But it doesn't cost more to be healthy i think it's it's about time is more an issue for people isn't it that they they feel that i just my life is so busy i don't have time to start cooking but you know you have to prioritize your health if you haven't got your health you haven't got everything you know you haven't got anything mm. have you and it doesn't have to yeah. take lots of time it really doesn't there's so many ways that you can prepare food you don't have to cook gourmet meals every evening. You know, just roast a chicken, have that in the fridge and have some salad with that. You know, have some fish in the freezer that you can just put in the oven. There's so many easy ways just to eat proper food, really. It takes some planning and perhaps some discipline as well. I, I know I cook off on the weekends. I cook off some chicken. You know, and this is going to be the chicken for the week. I have some, I try to eat dark leafy greens three times a week. I'm going to have, I'll have that ready. I have some other vegetables, you know, and maybe some fruit if I kind of get a sweet craving. But again, it just kind of takes planning and just, a, you know, if it doesn't get planned, it won't get done. The, the three pillars I have always I've always heard of, of proper health, uh, you know, proper diet, exercise, and sleep. Do you agree with that? Are there more that should be added? Yeah, diet, exercise, and sleep, absolutely. They're, they're three key things. Um, one other thing that I would like to add to that is um, stress management because that is becoming a huge issue really in all societies that we're suffering from chronic stress and that has a huge impact on our health in, in every way so it's stress stress management sleep absolutely key nutrition uh, and movement we, we need to move more so yeah I, I, they're, they're great pillars and uh, I don't know if you know if you know Andrew Huberman. He's a, uh, a teacher there, a professor at Stanford. But he he does add three to those, and uh, associating with positive people. So removing stress is another. He also says sunlight in the morning gives you direct vitamin D, very important. And then he adds water. So he adds those three onto the other three. Yeah, but water, uh, that is crucial. And we don't, none of us really drink as much as we should. And it's such an easy thing to do, isn't it? Yeah. Drinking. yeah. I mean, it's, it really is very simple. Uh, but, you know, the majority of people don't really drink enough. And, and it's something that can make a huge difference in, in how you feel. And sunlight, yeah, uh, totally. It's, we need to get outside and, and, you know, not only for vitamin D uh, production, but also to get our circadian rhythm. You know, we need light in the morning to wake up and, and, and get our rhythm uh, how it should be. So it's, it's really important just to get outside, even if it's just for five, ten minutes. Yeah, it's important to note that all these things don't cost a lot of extra money. You can get water, you can get, you know, sunlight, you can do these things. And uh, talking about movement and exercise, I liked one tip that you you noted where, you know, you're English, you drink a lot of tea and you put some dumbbells near the kettle and you, you tend to lift them while you're waiting for the tea. So you're just coupling one habit with another uh, to, to help influence your movement. Mm. Yeah, that's such a, and that I've seen that work so well with clients that if you add on a, a habit, if you're trying to, you know, form a new habit, which is difficult, it's very difficult yes. changing habits and forming new habits. But if you attach that habit that you're trying to develop onto one that you automatically already do, like brushing your teeth is a, is another example. It's much easier to keep that habit. It's much easier to form that habit. So I do, yes, by my kettle, 
You're right, I do drink a lot of tea. <laughs> well, I do get a chance to lift my dumbbells quite regularly. <laughs> Good for you. So uh, we, we <clears throat> need to talk about menopause now. And I have loved ones that are, so uh, that are, that are, okay. So the three stages, right? There's right. The perimenopause around 45, it's pre, uh, menopause is one year, 12 months without menstruation. And then there's post menopause. So the, the, the difference between menopause and post menopause, is that a, a day? Yeah, that's a really good question, Joe, because it is, it is quite confusing, isn't it, really? But in in theory, yes, it is really a day because when you haven't had a menstruation for a year, then then you are officially in menopause. But then, you know, for that day, but then the time after that, you're actually in post-menopause. Right. So really, when you think about it, it, it is actually only a day. <laughs> I was confused by that. And I think there must be something I'm missing. So, and, and then I've heard cases where women at the 11th month have a period and they've got to reset and start over again. And uh, I know a loved one of mine has, you know, uh, blood flow has increased heavily and there's fatigue. And th you say there's a probably deficiency in iron at that point. Yeah, the perimenopause, which is the time before menopause where you're still menstruating, yeah. you're still fertile, that really can be, you know, your, your hormones are a bit chaotic. They can be all over the place. And this is when women start experiencing, you know, the, the array of different menopausal symptoms. There's over 40 different symptoms. And one of those wow. can be very heavy, heavy uh, bleeding, um, you know, having two periods in a month and then not having one for a couple of months. So it's really things yes. that are very chaotic uh, and, and all the different symptoms. It can, it can be a really difficult time for, for some women. Yeah, and the weight gain and, you know, there's just the, the, the whole body is changing, you know. It's the second puberty that we mentioned before where um, – you know, what can we do to support, well, what can males do to support our, you know, female counterpart, uh, counterparts going through this uh, change? Yeah, I think the the most, the best thing that, that men could do to support women is really, and I understand it's not easy, but really try to like understand what is going on and not just the fact that they're being moody or, you know, that they're irritable because it, there is a reason for it. You know, the, mm. the estrogen and progesterone, when they decline, and testosterone, uh, they really have an effect on many things, including mood and, and how you feel. So you can find yourself, you know, being very, like, snappy and, and, and angry over things, really, that normally you wouldn't be bothered about. So I think from, from a man's point of view, it's really... I think it's good to have that conversation with, with your partner or, you know, women in your life and just just say, I really want to understand what you're going through. Just tell me so so I can be sympathetic. Because the mm. worst thing a menopausal woman wants is is a man that says, oh, oh what's wrong with you? Or, you know, the, it's not easy, is it? Because I think it's an area that men... They, it's not that they don't want to help, but they don't maybe understand exactly what is going on. Yes, the ongoing, uh, you know, uh, trying to understand your partners, what they're going through, and sometimes they don't want to talk, sometimes you don't want to listen, and it's just a major change. And one of your conversations said sometimes it could drag on for 15 years, 10 years. It's horrible. Yeah, unfortunately, some women is so individual. I mean, some women just glide through and don't really have any symptoms at all. Wow. Uh, but that the, the majority of women do experience some sort of menopausal symptoms on, and, and some really, really suffer. And what happens is when you come into menopause, which is the end of menstruation, and post-menopause, it, it grad, your symptoms gradually subside. However, there are mm -hmm. women that, you know, it can just go on for many years afterwards they they tend to decrease in frequency but you know you if you have to think you, you're lacking those hormones 
so even in postmenopause, and unless you 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 know you take hormone replacement therapy, you will be lacking in those hormones, and the lack of those hormones, you know, puts you at one at risk of uh, some diseases, and and also you know you need these hormones to for your body to function correctly. So unfortunately, mm. you can still have these symptoms for quite a few years into postmenopause. And how do you help women going through perimenopause? You know, do you, do you counsel them? Do you say this is typical? Do you uh, try to advise supplements, uh, health? I mean, how, how what what help do you do you offer them? Yeah, I work with uh, programs uh very tailored to the the client. Um so we look at nutrition, so we really look at how you can help your hormone balance and how you're feeling with using the power of food. And I do um, hmm. testing. So if necessary, we would do some uh, functional testing. So maybe uh, blood tests to see their mineral and vitamin uh, levels, because you could, you could be deficient in something without knowing it. And that can really affect how you feel. Hmm. Uh, and, th and then looking at areas that we can support them with food. Uh, so really, getting rid of all the processed sugary foods and, and putting in more of a whole foods diet, uh, looking maybe at supplementation, depending on, on what they need. Um, there's lots of good vitamins and minerals that, that we can help to, to boost uh, menopausal women's needs. But supplements, I would always want to check first because there's no point in just taking supplements, you know, just because, just in case, you know, you need, you need mm. to really get the test done and see what you'll, you'll maybe deficient in. Uh, and then working on the lifestyle piece, so really supporting them um, if there's any changes that they maybe need to do in their lifestyle. And then the mindset, so really helping them to look at this in a more positive light because it's shown in research, if you have a positive look on life or the situation that you're in it's one it will cause less stress and it actually has an effect on on your symptoms and how you experience them mm. you know and it's not easy as it's you can't just say to someone to suddenly become positive but you can you know talk to them and really try to change their mindset that this this is a totally natural process uh, but you know suffering isn't you don't nobody no woman has to suffer through this that there is so much uh help that that people can get and then i would recommend um you know if it, if it was for them obviously it's not for everybody but uh if they would talk to their doctor about hormone replacement therapy if that would be something that they would be uh interested in so empowering women to to get the knowledge because at the end of the day it's their choice so once they've got all that knowledge in front of them then they can decide on what direction they you know they want to go yeah and i think you mentioned once every woman's going to go through this hopefully right they live that long and it's just a normal part of life and their partners their friends should all do their best to understand and help cooperate. You want to cut out refined sugar. You know what? That we should both do that together, right? I mean, it's bad for us anyway. You know, maybe once or twice a month, sure, we'll have some, we'll have some chocolate or something, but it'll be the exception and move together in that will will only help it move along and lead to less stress and happiness. Yeah, I love that, Joe. That's so nice. Cause it if you do it together with your partner, it just makes it so it's so much support there, isn't it? If you've got that right. person in your life saying, you know what, I, I, I see that you're suffering. Let's do this together. That's a lovely thing. That's so supportive. Yeah, even in, in weight loss journeys that people have, it's hard for just one person in the household to do it. You know, it's very difficult because they don't want anything else, that food around. They don't want the temptation. You know, we, they don't want people, you talk about... Um, Foraging? No, what's the term you use where people kind of eat all day and pick at uh, things? Grazing. 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 Yes, yes, yes. You mentioned that more than once, and that's just so unhealthy. And uh, you know, um, I, so I, I, I lost a lot of weight. I 
started my business back in in the 90s and wasn't paying attention to my body Allison and I you know found myself at 340 pounds uh so uh doctor said to me you know you're not going to see your daughter graduate if you continue you're pre-diabetic you know you're pre-hypertension and uh uh you got to do something so you know I took it upon myself and cut everything in half uh, diet wise I got rid of all sugar you know so I made the change, lost about 130 pounds in about a year, year and a half. I did some triathlons and people always ask me, you know, how did I do it? You know, they want some quick answer. You know, how do I do that? How did you? Do that? And my answer is just discipline. You know, we just got focused and got discipline. Uh, how does discipline play a role in your life? For me personally, or when I work with yes. clients. For, for, Let's go yeah. both. Personally, I, 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 one, one I'd like to say is congratulations because that is a, a huge achievement, Joe, in, in losing all that weight. And I totally agree with you. It's There's many factors that come into play, but you've got to want to do it, haven't you? And you've, you've yeah. got to have that discipline there because, unfortunately, there is no easy fix. But when you do lose the weight, and you were saying you, you've been uh, in sporting events that – you just feel so good that you're never going to want to go back to feeling how you did before. And I find with myself, discipline wise, is that I feel great, but I feel great because of what I eat and, and my outlook mm. on life. And, it, you know, nobody's perfect, but you really have to work on that. And there are times where you think, oh, days where you maybe haven't got as much energy and you think, oh, I'm just going to go and, you know, have a quick meal or, or have a takeaway. But then I think, no, I'm not going to do that because I know how it will make me feel. Mm. So I am disciplined in how I eat, but <clears throat> not, not like unrealistically. You know, we all enjoy certain foods and a glass of wine sometimes, but I think it's, so, it's in moderation, isn't it? Everything in moderation uh, is is fine but it's when you allow yourself to just you know eat these processed foods every day and it just makes you feel so terrible so i i do some sort of uh movement every day some sort of exercise mm. even if it's just for 10 minutes and i really do look at, at what i eat and i try to have a positive outlook on life and and surround myself with positive people, not people that that draw energy and have a very negative, and that I think makes a huge difference about who the people that you're around. Yeah, very very true. And you know, some people, you know, we, we were talking before about you know you need support in your immediate area, you know, your family, your your spouse, your your household, your your immediate peers. But in my particular case, I didn't tell anybody that I was doing it. I, so that's, that just worked for me. So I just started working hard and doing it. And I didn't really want this support system. for. I, I still don't really understand why, by the way. It seems selfish, actually. But uh, it just didn't work for me. But others would be different. So when you talk about you know, discipline and how you do it, I wonder, and I love your synonyms, by the way. You said realistic and moderation. Those are wonderful. Uh, you know, because everybody gives me a different answer to that. And I get pushback, Allison. People say, you don't need discipline. You need compassion and you need love and you need empathy, to which I agree, by the way. I don't claim to be captain, you know, uh, <laughs> discipline. Uh, I think you need a certain amount of self-discipline to have empathy and, and love. But uh, here we are. Now, when you work with your clients and they're going through menopause is a certain amount of discipline needed on their part to you know pull away and and be stress free and and focus on themselves yeah i mean they have to to make changes so they can start feeling better there is there is some discipline needed there because if you're going to change the way that you're eating or you, you're going to introduce new foods or you're going to stop doing a lifestyle activity that isn't benefiting your your health you have to have some sort of discipline there so you do it yeah. but these the women that come to see me they're normally feeling terrible and they're overwhelmed and that they're, they're ready 
that they're more than ready to to do that because they just they just want to feel better. So you know, they say I'll do anything, and they're really as long as you give people support, then then they will really you know do the best that they can. And of course, sometimes they have bad days and and maybe they didn't do exactly what they should have done, but that's okay as well. It's just pick yourself up and then move on. You know, don't punish yourself just because, you know, you ate something you shouldn't have done. Yeah, you'll be more stressed out about that and that'll cause more stress. Just move on. (laughs) You know, there's going to be days, you know, to think that every day is going to be great is unrealistic. It is because you know life is it's a roller coaster, isn't it? You know you have stages in your life where everything is fantastic, and then there you know it's not always jolly, is it for for any of us? But that's what my my mother was amazing. She she said to me, which I never forgot. Um, you know when life was pretty bad, she'd say, "You know what, Alison? It's character building. If your life had been totally smooth." then you wouldn't have such a character. And I love that because it does, doesn't it? Yeah. It builds us, uh, our character. If life was all jolly, we maybe wouldn't be as interesting. I mean, Alison, some of our greatest artists in the history of mankind had terrible lives, mm. you know, and they fought back because of it. And they've made great art, be it music, painting, whatever it may be. You know, they fought back and... uh you know, and it does, it does develop character and it makes you stronger and, uh, uh, and we have to move on. Uh, another good point that you bring out about diet is fermented foods, kimchi, sauerkraut, things like this that get overlooked that are important. Yeah. I'm a huge fan of, of all the fermented vegetables. And that is because of our microbiome, which our microbiome is our gut bacteria. And there's a huge amount of research now, which is fantastic on this. So we're really starting to understand how this affects us and our bodies and how important it is. So, you know, our gut bugs should be in balance. And what can happen, there's something called dysbiosis. And that's when your, if you like to say that your bad bugs take over. So, you know, the good mm. bugs that we need uh, for our health get like overrun by the, the bad bugs and we don't want this. So we really have to look after our uh, gut health. And you can do this by eating the fermented vegetables like sauerkraut, um, kimchi, uh, kefir, which is, is like a yogurt sort of drink, uh, kombucha. All of these products have uh, these wonderful what we call probiotics in Uh, And that is the bacteria that is very good in our gut. So it is, it's not something that we're used to eating really, is it? It's not in, in, in some cultures in the world, they do eat, eat kimchi and and, um, sauerkraut. But I think in a lot of countries, we're not used to eating that, but it's actually delicious. I'm a huge fan of kimchi. You know, you can just have that a, a table, a couple of tablespoons a day. You don't need to eat like <laughs> loads of it yeah and there's families that you know will fight over, over each other about whose kimchi is better you know and it's uh it's it's really it, it's a whole wonderful science and what's coming out with oops with with um with your with gut you talk about the gut you know the the, the biome and uh the, the science that's coming out with there is really really incredible and just you know, it's just the old saying, what does your gut tell you? You know, my daughters are in university and, you know, and I, I, they ask advice every once in a while. And I always say, well, what does your gut tell you? You know, does this person who you think is going to be trouble in your life, are they worth it? You know, what, listen to your inner self. What is your gut? And just that expression alone uh, lends some credence. Yeah. I mean, the the gut affects virtually every system in the body. And there is a huge percent, uh, connection between the brain and the gut because we have a, a nerve called the vagus nerve. And, and right. this goes directly from the gut to the brain. And, you know, they've, they're seeing in research at how, how the, you know, your gut bacteria, you know, depending on the balance of it, depending what bacteria you've got there, can can affect like your brain and, and how you're feeling mood wise. It's fascinating. And there's also um, research, there's something called estrobolome. And, and this is a, um, 
a type of gut bacteria that helps in modulating uh, and metabolizing estrogen. So this has been very um, interesting in, in obviously women's health uh, and uh, perimenopause and menopause because we need to get rid of estrogen. It's like your body, we don't want old estrogen circulating back in the system. We need to excrete mm. that. And this estrobolome, which is called, which is a, a gut bacteria, has a um, a role in doing this. So you can um, metabolize and, and modulate the circling estrogen in the body. I mean, it's it's, it's fascinating. You, the, there's so much knowledge coming out now about the the gut bacteria, and they also, in the large intestine, they're responsible for producing, um, you know, elements and compounds that we need for our health. Yeah, it's really impressive. I, I look forward to learning more about that and seeing the studies come out. You, you also mentioned that Europe is actually experiencing a menopause revolution. Yeah, I'm glad you brought that up, actually, Joe, because I I think it was last week. Though I was so happy because that's true in in Europe, especially in the United Kingdom, there is a menopause revolution going on. But I saw it was in the New York Times. Hmm. There was a big article on menopause and how women. This is like appalling that women have not been given the help that they need. Um, I can't remember the name of the article, but I saw on social media how, you know, this this is fantastic because it's just going to have a knock on effect. So I think the revolution is coming <laughs> or has landed in the US as well now. But in Europe, it's been it's been it happened roughly about. Well, it must be like two, three years ago, and it really started mm. with there's some fantastic uh doctors that specialize in menopause and also there was a lot of uh or a few celebrities that started mm. doing documentaries on their experience through menopause and you know it's really just opened it up and, and women are not accepting you know getting brushed under the carpet anymore and they want help from their doctors so yeah it's it's great and in the workplace as well that's really um you can see how a lot of um companies are starting to put in place like menopausal uh, um, protocols on, on how they can help women because it's a huge part of the workforce you know these mm. these women are, are crucial for for companies they're 45 or 40 plus you know it's not always 45 you go into perimenopause so that there is a lot of momentum happening in, in Europe but I, like I say I think it's 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 happened or it's on its way to the U.S. as well. I hope, I hope, uh, because we know in many cultures, you know, that the women are, you know, in villages are looked up to once they go through, you know, their matriarchal system and they're actually, you know, admired. And the fascinating thing with that is in, in other cultures that, that when women are thought of, you know, this is a... a um, it's thought in Japan, for example, they, they look at it as a new beginning, like a revival. Oh. It's very positive. And, and those women don't experience menopausal symptoms like women do in the Western world. And that's been shown in, in other cultures as well as when these women are looked up to and it's not got all this negativity attached to it. Hmm. But they, they don't suffer as much as women do in the Western world. So it goes back a lot to mindset as, as well. That is absolutely fascinating. Uh, Alison Blood, what motivates you? Uh, what motivates me? I, I motivate, but business-wise, I'm very motivated motivated by helping people. I think I, I'm a very caring person and I get delight out of hearing how I help women and really turn their lives around. That, that to me means everything and that motivates me to keep going on and, and getting this menopausal message out there because I, I can I see how I can help women and, and really turn their lives around. Oh, that must be so rewarding. Mm -hmm. And how do you measure success? 
how do I measure success? I would, it's probably going back to what I said in, in the amount of women that I can help. Getting the message out there, the, the more women that I can help, the more successful I feel. Mm. Yeah, that must be just so rewarding. Helping people is just, um, oh, God, it's so rewarding. Because when you help them, they'll help others. Because, you know, they say hurt people hurt people. You know, so if you're helping people, hopefully that'll cast on. And th those will help other people. And we can just, you know, increase society and make it better for everyone. It's so rewarding. You know, you can't, yes. I can't explain how it makes you feel when you, you, someone calls or you, you get an email and just saying, you know, Alison, you, you've turned my life around. I'm like a different person. Thank you so much. It's, you know, it's more, it's, it's the best feeling ever more than mm. any, any, any other thing you could wish for really. That's a wonderful uh, anecdote. Alison, thank you so much for your time today. I know it's late there in, in Stockholm. I appreciate you staying up. And uh, how can we get in touch with you? Yeah, I think the best way is through my website, which is alisonblad.com. On there, I've actually got a resources page where there's lots of uh, lovely free downloads and meal plans and uh, advice on uh, what you should be eating through menopause, etc. So if any of your listeners want to go there and download everything feel free and i'm on all social media platforms uh allison blard you can find me there yeah the website's great you've got pictures of these great meals and you uh you, there's lots of free downloads allison is one l a l i s o n and blad b l a d h dot com we'll make sure to put it in our show notes allison thank you so much for your time i hope one day to get out there to stockholm and perhaps we can have some of that tea that you uh, talk so well of oh thank you so much joe it's been a pleasure talking to you and i'd love to see you here in uh, stockholm <laughs> Be well. Good night. Thank you for listening and or viewing Joey Pinn's Discipline Conversations. Please share this episode with one or two of your friends who you think may benefit from the episode. Our website, www.joeypins.com. There you find lots of resources and you could join our mailing list. Please follow us on all our social media, Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. Podcast information, the video version of our podcast is on YouTube. Please subscribe. Audio is on all major podcasting platforms. Please follow them. And if you like it, please consider giving five-star rating. Would really appreciate that. Would you like to financially support the podcast? You can go to our Patreon site. Consider five, ten, or twenty dollars a month. There's all kind of plans that we have there. It's like a one-time payment. What is this podcast episode worth to you? $25, $50, $100, $500, $1,000, $5,000. You be the judge. You can go to our PayPal account to do that as well. Thank you again for listening or watching Joey Pinn's Discipline Conversations.